Listen very carefully to this message before we begin to pray. It is called loss of signals from heaven. Loss of signals from heaven. Some people call it spiritual blackout. Loss of signals from heaven. Fortunately, many Nigerians now carry phones. And you know what it means when the signal is lost. It means communication stops. One tragedy that can happen to a man or woman is for you to lose the signal of heaven. It's a very, very serious matter. Listen, beloved. God is a communicator. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man or woman hears my voice and he opens the door, I will come in. God is a communicator. God communicates. He communicates his mind concerning life's issues. He communicates his will to you. So you know what he wants you to do. He communicates his purpose to you. So you know why certain things are happening and why God is doing certain things. He communicates divine instructions to you. So he can instruct you on the way to go. He communicates divine directions to you. So that you can know which direction to take. Then he communicates his agenda for your life to you. So that you don't live a useless life. Because any life lived outside divine agenda is a waste. You may be rich, it's still a waste. You may be popular, it's still a waste. As far as that life is being lived outside divine agenda, it communicates divine warnings to us. It warns us. It communicates its corrections to us. And that correction or rebuke, then it communicates understanding to us. So, the day, I want to say that again, the day that you begin to hear clearly from God, that is the day your progress as a Christian begins. And you are not going to get very far in your Christian life if you are dumb and deaf to heaven. I'm praying for anyone here this morning. If you are a spiritual bat, them dumb from heaven. No voice. No revelation. No divine dreams. You are just like that. If you are like that this morning, receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. The day you begin to hear from the Lord, that day your progress begins. The day you begin, you learn the, the principle, the power, the mystery of conversing with God. That day your life takes a new turn. That's why if you read your Bible well, you read plenty of Bible men who heard God's voice. Noah had God's voice. Abraham had God's voice. Moses had God's voice. Isaiah had the voice of the Lord. Jeremiah had the voice of the Lord. Ezekiel had the voice of the Lord. Daniel had the voice of the Lord. Elijah had the voice of the Lord. John the Baptist had the voice of the Lord. Those prophets in the Bible had the voice of the Lord. It is in this generation people don't hear God anymore because they are not serious enough to hear him. If you take nothing out of this morning service, take it from the service that you will do everything in your power for God to be talking to you. The closer you move to God, the closer he moves to you. The farther you move away, the much farther he will move away. He said, move close to me. And I will move close to you. So if you move away from me, 
I will move further away from you. And since his legs are longer than yours, if he moves back one step, he has gone so far from you. That is why it's a very powerful prayer. To say, Father, give me the eyes of Elisha. Give me the ears of Samuel. Samuel, as a small boy, heard the voice of the Lord. May you hear his voice. Actually, amen is very weak. I said, may you hear his voice. I said, may you hear his voice. If some woman had heard his voice, they would not marry the man they married. If some men had heard his voice, they wouldn't put their money in that business, they put it and the money went away. If those students had heard the Lord, they would not fail the examination. So there is danger in not hearing God's voice. When you don't hear God's voice, you have an inability to understand what is even going on in your life. Then you are ignorant of God's will. Because you are not hearing Him. When you don't hear God's voice, you will lack wisdom. You just be talking from your brain. And the capacity of human brain is so severely limited. When you don't hear from the Lord, you will make wrong, wrong decisions. You will take decisions based on emotion, based on your brain, based on what you can see without knowing what's going to happen later. When you don't hear from the Lord. When you don't hear from the Lord, you begin to walk in error. Error. You start living a life of disobedience. Because you are not hearing what God is telling you. When you don't hear from the Lord, you live a rebellious life. Your life becomes inconsistent spiritually. Because you are not hearing from the Lord. When you are not hearing from the Lord, you will live a shallow, very shallow Christian life. All that would be good, but you will be shallow. There are plenty of shallow Christians in the service here this morning. Very shallow, worldly, vain. They don't understand. They don't even know what God is talking about their own life. When you don't hear from the Lord, you will be controlled by the flesh. It's your flesh that will be giving you the directives. When it says drink, you drink. When it says smoke, you smoke. When it says come in for fornication, you do it. Because you are not hearing. When you are not hearing from the Lord, one spiritual sickness again comes in. It is called spiritual blindness. Followed by spiritual deafness. When you don't hear from the Lord, you will be grieving the Holy Spirit and you may not even know because in the things of heaven, ignorance is no excuse. Ignorance is no excuse. Whether you know or you don't know, if you drink poison, it will affect you. Whether you know it's poison or you don't know it's poison. That ignorance does not remove the strength of the poison to poison. If you are not hearing from God, you will be walking into trouble. Just walk into trouble like that. If you don't hear from God. I am praying for somebody here this morning. Every deafness of the spirit... I command it to vanish in the name of Jesus. A sevenfold amen. Amen. A man got into a, an aircraft. Everybody was seated. Like he normally does. He bowed down his head to pray. He said, Father, commit this journey unto your holy hands. So the plane in the blood of Jesus as he prayed he heard the voice blood and he saw a small vision blood and he had son get out get out everybody is seated so he just removed his belt took his briefcase and started walking out the air hostess asked him where are you going he said I'm not traveling again he said well but why did you enter? So they don't finish. You lose your money. So yes. Let me lose the money. Got down. Was the only one that didn't die in that crash. I'm praying one more time. That spiritual deafness to vanish in the name of Jesus. That amen is not loud enough. May you hear God.
When you don't hear from God, you wow. suffer avoidable pains. Avoidable pains. I was sharing something with the singles yesterday at the press city. This was 1993. One mother packaged a daughter was packaged to my counseling place. She was all she was saying is Pastor, let me die. Pastor, let me die. So I asked, what was the problem? The mother said, Today was supposed to be a wedding. But the man did not show up. We now heard that the man was doing marriage somewhere else. With the person she has speak as bridesmaid. She's bridesmaid. That's why she's saying she wants to die. So I told her, don't die. Don't die. I said, Pastor, Pastor, you don't understand. I said, don't die. Your husband is coming. So I was we were able to persuade her to not to kill herself and to pray. She became serious with her spiritual life. She eventually knew how to hear from God. And I got married. Few months after the marriage of the man who jilted her. The man and the new wife died in an accident. She could have been in that vehicle if she got married to that man. But God saved her. I'm praying once again. May you hear God. When you don't hear from God, you live a confused life. You live a life of prolonged spiritual infancy because you are not hearing from God. You can say that I'm staying long on this one. I want you to understand. I want you to understand it very well. It is when men and women do not hear from God, they go about looking for prophets. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. What did God say? What did you see? Prophet, pray. What did God say? It's when you cannot hear from God. It is better, safer, more glorious for you to learn the principles of hearing from God and begin to hear than to hand over your destiny to a third party who knows nothing about your destiny. When you now begin to hear from God, oh, there are plenty of benefits. The first one is peace of mind. Peace of mind. When you begin to hear from God, you have divine direction. When you are hearing from God, you experience certainty of action. You are certain of the action you want to take when you begin to hear from God. Your hearing from God is a proof of your sonship. Then you have this ability to please God because you cannot hear what is telling you. I have a secret to tell you which many don't know. Hearing from God is actually the deepest secret of prosperity. It tells you where to go, where to put that money, where to invest, where not to invest. You want to hire an office, it tells you don't hire this one, hire that one, don't go to this one. You can still remember the story of that woman. She retired. All the money she got, she wanted to use it to start a supermarket. So she hired a big hall, paid the rent for five years, started the supermarket. Within two months of starting the supermarket, she had lost two staff. They died. Others were not, af were not afraid to come and join her. So she'll be the one arranging things. She'll be the one collecting money from customers. She'll be the one doing everything because they were afraid of dying. Eventually, the supermarket went down. It was then she started praying. She didn't pray before she hired the place. She's praying now. But when she started praying one day, as she stood at the front of the shop, a neighbor was passing. The neighbor said, Madam, how are you doing at this shop? The supermarket? I said, Yes. Did you ask anybody about this place before you hired it? Because I can see that nothing is happening here again. She said, no. I said, ha. Ah. So you see, everybody who has ever come here to do business, they have folded up and they have died. Say, so you are lucky to be alive. Say, so you know what? Say, so they said that many years ago, 
Two pregnant women were fighting and they killed themselves. These two were buried on this land. Can't do anything here. She had, but it was far, far too late. All the money was gone now. When you hear from the Lord, you prosper. When you hear from the Lord, it's a mark of divine endorsement. Divine endorsement. Therefore, a situation where the signal is lost is something to pray against. It's something to walk against. It's something you must say, no, 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 no. This cannot happen in my life. In 1 Samuel chapter 28, 1 Samuel chapter 28, 1 Samuel chapter 28, see what happened. 1 Samuel 28, look at verse 6. Saul tried to telephone heaven, but the signals were dead. In 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 6. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, when Saul inquired of the Lord, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophet, neither by dreams, now by Urim, even by prophets, even by prophets, even by prophets, meaning that prophets may sometimes run into trouble with God. Because there are some people with whom God has cut his lines of communication. God has switched off their phone and the prophet is trying to get information. God has caught communication with somebody and the prophet is trying to connect. The prophet who wants to connect these lines without consulting God will run into error. So, true prophets of God, true prophets, may sometimes find a person, a place, a thing, an issue about which God will say nothing. The problem is not the prophet. The channel does not have a problem. The problem is the person or the matter for which he is seeking a divine voice. That is, when the communication lines are off, the spiritual blackout is the result. So, God decided and determined a blackout against Saul. He went to prophet, nothing. He went for dreams, nothing. He went for Urim, nothing. He inquired from the Lord, nothing. The Bible says Saul inquired of the Lord. It was the spiritual thing to do. He didn't inquire from the devil. He inquired from the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. He wanted to know the mind of God. But when it tuned, it tuned to his previously active channels. He went to the network that he was using before. He tried to connect the frequencies he was contacting before. They were all dead. When he dialed the previously active lines, they had gone dead. Nothing was transmitting from them. He tried the dream channel. The dream channel was dead. He tried the urine frequency. The urine frequency was mocking his effort. He tried the prophetic station. Even the prophetic station went off the air. Each time he tuned in, it was off the air. Was it a sin to inquire from God? Certainly no. Why wouldn't God answer him? So the problem was not the channel. The problem was the man. God is still speaking through dreams to others. If others consulted the Urim, the Urim will still answer. If others went to the prophet, the prophet will still talk to them. But God will not have them say anything anymore to Saul. Where am I driving to this morning? If you 
are not hearing the voice of God clearly, the fault is not from heaven. It's you. You. The channels are still there. The lines are still active. But when it becomes the turn of some people, signals are lost. I'm going to pray again this prayer. The prayer may sound very light, but it's very heavy. May every spiritual deafness get out of your life in the name of Jesus. A sevenfold amen. were working. But God will not have them say anything anymore to Saul. The question is, why? Why? Why doesn't God want to contact him anymore? Simple reason. He had done nothing with the previous signals he received. The previous signals has done nothing. Why will God not to talk to some people? Your obedience is not complete. That's why. The previous things he has been telling you through his prophets, through the Holy Spirit, when you refuse to take action, you've done nothing with it. You are dependent in your heart. The line now goes dead. Unfortunately, when everyone's line goes dead, is that time the people normally need it most. So the first great question I need to ask you before we begin to pray. I've been coming to the mountain of fire and miracles mercy for a while now. What have you done with the signals you have received so far? What have you done? Are you part of those fighting people at the gate? Because they say, Madam, we don't want lipstick here. Madam, remove that chain. They were not here to serve chains. Madam, this dress is too open. Dress properly. Tell Mr. Man, remove your chain, put it in your pocket. We are not here to look at your chest. There are signals you are getting. You have done nothing with those signals. You are writing a letter to a time when the signal will be off. And you definitely need it most. The issue was not just to hear from God. The issue was not for just, just for God to speak. Of what use will it be? If God is speaking fresh things, when the things he has said to you before bore no fruit. If your heart was not right with God, even if you hide under prophetic anointing, God will go and seal up the prophet. And if you push the prophet too far, he will give you counterfeit information. In the past, God had shown Saul his sins. But each time, Saul will excuse himself. Blame is seen on others. Oh, it's always somebody else that is wrong. Always blaming others. One of the most difficult things for people to do is to point accusing fingers at themselves. I was wrong. It's my fault. I was wrong. People find that so difficult. Are you like this? Always blame others for whatever goes wrong with you. And so you went to visit a man in the house that you are not married to. And so now he forced you and slept with you. Now you are pregnant. Now you have a baby out of wedlock. And now you are complaining. It's the fault of the man. You know go better for that man. Like, it's his fault. Now, you walk into that room with your own legs. You undress yourself by yourself. So blame yourself for what you've done. Uh, well, well, normally I will not get angry. It's because I was provoked. No. Blame yourself. You should become unprovocable. Saul was like that. And this morning, it's somebody's fault. This one, it's another person. It's because of this. It's because they said that. Because of this. Sort of pointing accusing finger at themselves. 
when you are like that, you are writing a letter for the signals of heaven to be switched off you. God told Saul, destroy the Amalekites. Male, female, animals, everything. Make utter destruction. He understood the instructions. But the Bible says he preserved all those things that were good. The sheep, the cattle that were good, he preserved them. Half obedience is 100% disobedience. 99 and half obedience is disobedience. He disobeyed. And when Samuel confronted him, he said, what have you done? Why did you do this? He said, I've carried out the instructions of the Lord. Samuel said, what then is the bleating of the sheep that I hear? What then is the bleating of the sheep that I'm hearing? Oh, he sort of said, my father, sorry, I, I should have destroyed them. Let me go and destroy them now. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have brought them. It's, it's my mistake. So I brought them to sacrifice to the Lord your God. The people wanted it. He made excuse. Are you like this? Saul was all repentant. A self-excusing, dignified sinner. He was a proud man. Your case may be different from that. But the bottom line is this. There are some people whom God has blacked out from their frequencies. People to whom he will not speak. Irrespective of the prophetic channels through which they are passing through. If you are a prophet, you are here. You discover that some people come to you sometimes. And your prophetic computer blanks out. Each time you feed their name into your computer, it blanks out. The problem may not be the prophet or the computer. The problem is the name you are feeding into it. You are feeding a soul inside the computer. With whom God will have nothing to do. Then there will be no response. Then if you keep running from place to place. The prophet will just put one formula in your hand. One thing that God did not say about you. And you accept it. One other thing to learn is this. All who inquire of the Lord. They may not be sincere inquirers after all. Your going from prophet to prophet does not necessarily mean that you are spiritual. But if you don't address that blackout, just going from place to place, from place to place, then from that blackout, from the loss of signal, comes a more dangerous level. A man can graduate from loss of signal from heaven Spiritual blackout to where heavens now make a decision. And the decision is in Ezekiel. If heavens now make this decision in Ezekiel 14, heavens now make a decision against the person. In Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 4. Ezekiel 14, 4. So therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel, that started up his idols in his heart and put the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and commit to the prophet. I, the Lord, will answer him that commit according to the multitude of his idols. This is a dangerous level. It does heaven as close signal. You are now looking for a prophet to help you. The dangerous level is that that prophet will be telling you what everyone did not say, what will even destroy you, and you start carrying it out. Ahab, the king of Israel, got to that dangerous level. And everyone decided to mislead him and destroy him. This is a serious matter. Are you here this morning? You pray. No revelation. You are a spiritual bat. Deaf and dumb in the school of prayer. You are living a life no revelation, no dream, no vision, no night vision. Are you here this morning? You are living a life that lacks any spiritual gift. No speaking in tongues. No prophecy. No word of knowledge. No word of wisdom. Nothing. No prophecy. Are you here this morning? It's that you have never experienced any divine encounter. You don't get information from heaven. With open eyes, you enter into a father's net. You sleep, you can't recall your dreams. God will be bypassing you to be discussing your affairs with others. Ah, 
If that is your situation, ah, it means heaven has given you a red card to depart from the field of play. The Bible says, Ephraim has joined itself to idol. So, let him go. Leave him alone. Let him go. The Bible says, As for such as turn aside after their crooked ways, the Lord will lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. One word rings this morning. That word is spiritual discipline. You want to hear from God? You want sharpness in your spiritual ears? God is calling for discipline. Discipline is what modern day man needs most. But they don't want it. The modern day man does not want any form of discipline at all. Any young people have HIV now. In discipline. Students quit school. In discipline. Church members who neglect sermons. In discipline. People run away from anything that will make them toe the line of Jehovah. Many drugs that people are now swallowing. The, re- the reason was indiscipline to start with. Numerous books have been written just to confront indiscipline. But the truth is that that discipline is the key to power. Is the mark of maturity is the key to hear from the Lord. Discipline covers appetite, temperament, sexual urge, emotions, affections, moods, speech. It takes discipline to refrain from speaking when you know you want to talk. God is looking for disciplined people. People who will say, I am for Jesus. And I want flesh in my life to die. It takes discipline to do that. This morning we have prayers to pray. Very, very serious prayers indeed. Serious prayers indeed. So that that thing is blocking your spiritual ears. That thing closing your spiritual eyes. That thing that is giving the enemy confidence. Because when the enemy says that you can't see them, they, they act confidently. Confidently because they know that there is nothing you can, you can do against them. Confidence. I pray that the confidence of the enemy against any life here shall be broken to pieces in the name of Jesus. Rise to your feet now. Rise to your feet now. And all eyes close. And with a loud voice. I want you to sing that our traditional song they taught us to sing as small boys. That song that they taught us to sing many years ago. But you are going to put ears, ears in the song. Open my ears. Oh, hallelujah. shout the way I'm going to shout my own prayers. The Bible says we are not of them that go back into destruction. We are not of them. Can you shout this loud and clear? I bind and I cast out. I say sister who needs to shout that prayer loud and clear. Is that the loudest you can shout it? Every spirit of disobedience in the name of Jesus begin to bind and cast it out in Jesus 
Jesus name we pray you issue this command spiritual deafness I am not your candidate there in the name of Jesus somebody is breaking through in that this prayer Jesus' name we pray.